The Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that at the very, very, very end of the age, there is going to be a revolt. Really, it's the word mutiny in Greek. It's going to take place all over the world. It's happening in America, but it's not just in America. It's happening right now in most of the Western civilization. They're throwing off their standards, and they're saying, we're going to form a new world order, a new world. They even call it a kinder and gentler world, which is a total joke. There's nothing kind or gentle about it. It's a world of revolution, bedlam, hysteria. Just look at the nonsense that's going on in the streets across the world today. We might say, peace, peace, peace. This is not an age of peace. We are in the age of great disaster. And actually, it's one age getting ready to give birth to another age. And when one age gives birth to another age, it always has convulsions. And right now we're going through convulsions as an age ends and another age is about to begin. That's really where we are. But you know, I want to read a verse to you, if I may, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I have my Bible, and Brother Jim and Lori, if you need to interrupt me, just interrupt me. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, the Apostle Paul said, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and are gathering together unto him. So he's talking about the coming of the Lord. And he says that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled. And here he says that just before the coming of the Lord, there will be lots of opportunity to be shaken in mind and to be troubled. Well, today people are very shaken. They're very, very shaken. People are wondering, where are we prophetically? How soon is the coming of the Lord? What's going to happen next? Is the Antichrist here? Is he about to show up? Where are we? And people are very shaken. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't know the Bible. And Brother Jim, it's so important people know the Bible. And there's even a lot of preachers on television who don't know the Bible. Maybe they know a little piece of the Bible, but they don't know enough to see the whole picture. And so they're preaching things that really brings fear to people. And when you understand the whole picture, God never gives you fear. He's not in the business of giving fear. That's just not what God does. He will prepare us, but God never scares us. And in this verse, Paul says, there's going to be opportunity to be shaken in mind and to be deeply troubled. But then he says this in verse 3. Listen to this. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And when Paul says a falling away, in Greek it is the word apostasia, and maybe you hear another word. It's where you get the word apostasy. But it's from the word apo, which means to step away from. It describes a definite break in time or in belief. And the word stasia from the word stasis, which means to stand. When you put the two words together, it is a deliberate stepping away from something. And in fact, it is the same word translated in the Old Testament Septuagint as the word mutiny. And you find it in Joshua chapter 22 where it is literally translated a revolt, a rebellion, or a mutiny. And in this verse, Paul says, at the very end of the age, before the whole thing is wrapped up, there is going to be a worldwide mutiny against God, where society as a whole will be so modified to think differently that it will believe that it's throwing off the shackles of past religious thinking. They might even declare themselves to be progressive thinkers on the cutting edge of a new kind of thinking, a new day, a new way. But in fact, in order for them to create this new world that they want, they have to cut free of the shackles of the past. And those shackles to them are the teachings of the Bible, Judeo-Christian principles and ethics, a world that's going to try to throw all of that off. And it will be a mutinous attitude toward God and anything that even smacks of God. And the Bible says this has to happen worldwide before the man of perdition can be revealed. Then when you go to verse 7, look what he says in verse 7. This is amazing to me. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7, Paul says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Well, that is really important. You know, today, if you listen to YouTube, and I listen to a lot of YouTube, 
because I want to hear what people are saying. I'm amazed at some of the nonsense that some preachers are preaching. The people are speaking conspiracy theories. There's a conspiracy about this, and there's a conspiracy about that. And did you know such and such is involved in a conspiracy? I mean, if you listen to all of this, it will totally shake you to your core. Well, quit listening to all that craziness and listen to the Bible. The Bible tells us there is a conspiracy. There's a big conspiracy. And it's this one in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. And Paul said the mystery of iniquity does already work. The conspiracy was at work when Paul wrote that verse. What is it? Well, first of all, the word mystery describes something that is not evident, it's hidden, or it is a covert operation. You know how this really could be translated? There is a covert operation happening right under our noses that most people are not aware of. And the Bible calls it the mystery of iniquity. That word iniquity is the Greek word anomia. The word nomos is the word for law, established standards of the scripture. You put an A on the front. It's the effort to remove all those standards, to remove the word of God, to throw off those shackles, And the Apostle Paul is saying, even in the first century when he was writing this verse, there already was a diabolical plan at work, at work to begin modifying the world step by step, decade by decade, century by century, changing the world from the world that was then to a world that will not know the Bible. Talk to the younger generation today, they don't even know the Bible a world that does not know what is right and wrong, that's a lawless world. Now today we have rioting in the streets and the looting of buildings, that's lawlessness. But the word lawlessness here doesn't really mean anarchy, it just means a world that is free of law. They have thrown it off, they don't want to be told anymore what's right, what is wrong. A world that is so confused, so confused morally, it won't know what's right and what's wrong. It really won't know anymore. 